Section 3. You will hear a tutor talking to a student about a future assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi, Professor James. Have you got a minute? You see, I'm having a bit of trouble getting started on my graduate employability assignment. Well, OK, as long as it doesn't take longer than 10 minutes, as I have a meeting to get to at 3.30. Yep, fine. It shouldn't take long at all. OK, Sally. Tell me what you've done so far, and we'll go from there. Well, as you suggested, I chose three local businesses and contacted them via telephone to introduce myself. That's good. Well, the thing is, I couldn't get past the secretary of two of them. Do you have any suggestions? What about following up with a letter stating what time you'll be calling again? Oh, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> so, tell me about the one you have contacted. Right. Well, he was very helpful, actually. He received the survey I emailed him and has already sent it back. I've had a very quick look at it, but haven't had a chance to write it up yet. So far, so good. Carry on. Well, apart from that, I've also found a lot of statistics that exist on the starting salaries graduates begin on once they finish studying. There's some really interesting stuff out there. Did you know, for example, that your average engineer earns nearly as much as a medical graduate? <laughs> yes, I did. Gosh, I had no idea. <laughs> Having second thoughts about a career in human resources, are we? <laughs> no, but I was surprised. Anyway, getting back to where I was, I've gone to the library, but the books you recommend have already been taken out. Apart from one, that is. It's called A Starting Success. I haven't read it yet, but I've taken it out and it's on my list of things to do. Have you come up with a plan yet? Yes, and I've written my hypothesis as well as my introduction, but that's where I've got stuck. I don't really know how I'm going to be able to present all of the information, as there's so much of it. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Well, firstly, I'd recommend you start with analyzing what the employer said. Now, can I have a look at the questionnaire you wrote? Yes, here it is. Thanks. Oh, dear. Well, it's no wonder you're overwhelmed with information. You've collected a lot of information which can be overwhelming. Oh, dear. That took me ages. And does that mean I can't use it? Afraid so. But don't worry, if you've got a pen and paper, I'll quickly give you some pointers, and then you can rejig it to get the information you're looking for. OK, um, just a minute. I know there's a pen in here somewhere. OK, got it. Right. Well, first and foremost, you need to be clear. There's no point having a beautifully worded document throughout that no one understands. Use language that is simple. Right, got that. What next? You need to catch the reader's attention at the start of the document. And you need to find the right balance between formal and informal language. Your survey isn't an official document, but more of a living one that serves a purpose 
So neutral language is best. Okay. Just writing that down. Okay. The next one's what your mistake was this time. Try not to use open-ended questions, or you'll find it impossible to collate your results. Yep. I think I've learned my lesson there. <laughs> what else? Scales really do make the job of completing the questionnaire easier for the recipients by saving them lots of time and effort writing. I take your point. Anything else? Uh-huh. One last thing. Make sure you've thought about the logic of your questions. There's nothing worse than trying to make choices about things that seem to have no order. Right. Got it. I see where I went wrong now, and we'll try to do better next time. Don't worry. It's a very easy mistake to make, and one that many people come across the first time they do this kind of assignment. Okay, Sally, I really must rush. I'm late for my appointment. Of course. Thanks for your help. I'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers.